Hello, everybody. I'm here in, I think this is Reseda, and I'm right at the, almost at the intersection of Wilbur and uh, Van Owen. And I'm right here next to the LA River. There's a YMCA right here. And, um, but what I wanted to show you was across the street because I just noticed this on my way to see a friend. If you look across the street, you can see this, uh, there's about a 15 foot high giraffe. Well, there's two of them. And then there's two dinosaurs here too. Actually, there's three dinosaurs because there's one over here as well. We got this one right here. And then uh, there's one right here and one right here. I'd never noticed this before, but I don't uh, get over to this area that often. Looks like there's some kind of a nursery in the background here where they grow plants, but these are made of metal. And, uh, like a Tyrannosaurus here. And then this is some kind of a nursery. I don't know who owns that, but um, it's kind of nice to have something like this. A little bit of artwork being presented. And then as we come up here, Again, we're at the LA River. And then right here is an interesting little um, area. This is LAPD Officer James Bea Memorial Walk. And it says he was killed in the line of duty on June the 7th, 1988. So right here at Krebs and Van Owen is this memorial walk right here. And it's just a little area that you can stroll down and walk your dog. And there's some nice shade here and some nice plants. I'm not sure how far down it goes, but it goes quite some ways, of course. I'm reminded of um, an episode of uh, Huell Hauser's show. There was an area just like this called Ernie's Walk. I believe it was over in Sherman Oaks, or it uh, might have been Studio City, uh, but that was on one of his programs, Huell, Huell Hauser's program. Of course, he passed away on January the 7th, 2013, of prostate cancer. But I used to really enjoy his show and uh, Ernie's Walk. Uh, it was about a, a man, I guess his name was Ernie, and he took it upon himself to, to maintain a area like this right next to the LA River. And he had places where you could stop and sit and rest and read magazines and walk your dog. And he just devoted a certain amount of time to 
making that look good and cleaning it up and uh, putting in some plants and making it inviting. I don't know if that's still there now because it was literally 25 years ago that I remember going over there and checking that out. But anyway, there I think you can see the dinosaurs in the background. Kind of interesting. I think this is another tributary of the L.A. River. At least that's what I think. I'm right here at the corner of Havenhurst and Plummer. And after showing you that video that I just did on the dinosaurs, it reminded me of another little, little landmark in the neighborhood up here, right at the corner of Havenhurst and Plummer. It's on the uh, southeast corner. And let me show it to you. I have been noticing this for over 30 years, probably 40 years. Right in front of me, in the middle of the screen, you'll see that the ivy that is uh, part of the uh, telephone pole here. Look at the bottom and you'll see that an ivy poodle is existing right here. And the guy who owns this house has been maintaining this for all these years. Every time I've ever passed this, it's always looked very nicely trimmed. And uh, I'll tell you a little side note about this, which is kind of interesting. I once came up to his door. I believe his name is Tom. And uh, I told him how much the neighborhood enjoys the fact that he has kept this trimmed and looking so nice all these years. And he, well, he called me because I'm an insurance broker and I actually insured his house for a year or two. Uh, and he called me because I guess I complimented his house. Now I'm going to go up and knock on his door today. I have not talked to him in probably 30 years. I don't even know if he lives here, but I think he does because if not, Sorry about that. Uh, uh, looked like a World War II era plane was landing at Van Nuys Airport, which is directly south of here. But I'm going to see if the same man owns the house, and I'm just going to tell him thank you again uh, for bringing us this delightful little, well, big, looks like a poodle to me. Very nice. Anyway, we'll find out. A friend of mine that lives in Reseda told me about another place that has more dinosaurs. And this is at Satakoy, on Satakoy, just west of Tampa, on the south side of the street. And uh, apparently this is a nursery here. And they've got a couple of these dinosaurs in the in the front of this place. Well, there's a third one right there. I forget what kind of dinosaur that is, but I, I know I've seen photos of that one. But these look like T-Rexes in front, these two. And I think they've got an oak tree on this property. I could be wrong, but apparently it's an oak tree. Or maybe it's just near here. And I don't know if this is part of the same thing, but look at the, look at the size of this cactus. That's got to go up uh, almost 20 feet. I don't know if this is related to the... Uh, 
at this nursery or not, but I'm gonna go in and see if I can find this oak tree that my friend was telling me about because he thinks it's one of the largest in the valley, if not one of the oldest in the valley. So I guess it's called California Nursery Specialties. They have a lot of cactus here. I've never noticed this place before. But it looks very tidy and it's laid out nicely. I'm just going to walk to the back and see. Oh, look, they've got orange trees here, too. Quite a big place. You can see it goes all the way over to this fence right down here where that little tree is there. So it's quite large. This might be more of the property here, but it's uh not developed into the nursery. Anyway, I didn't see the uh, oak tree that my friend was talking about. Maybe it's in this neighborhood right here. Maybe I'll call him back and ask him about it. But mainly, I just wanted to show you those dinosaurs. It's kind of unique and fun. Well, I just talked to I just talked to somebody that works at the nursery and they said that the oak tree might be right here on the corner I'll have to call my friend and see if this is the one that he was talking about The trunk is about four feet in diameter. So I just got off the phone with my friend Ron and that oak tree that I just pointed out is called a cork oak and apparently that's where cork comes from because my friend Ron he's always been very good with trees he he can look at a tree and tell you what it is and what kind of wood comes from it and whether the wood is good for fireplaces or not or whether it's you know long burning or like pine is a very quick burning wood. It's very light and and uh, it doesn't last long. But anyway, that's a cork oak. And I think he said that it's like one of the biggest in the valley. Uh, I don't know my oak trees, uh, but uh, that's a little bit of the story on that. And he said that it is owned by the same people that own that nursery. Uh, because they own all the way down to the corner. So the house 
that was behind that oak tree actually, I guess, is owned by the person that owns the nursery. So um, that's the story about that. Anyway, um, have a good 4th of July. That's coming up in two days. And I will talk to you soon. This house right here used to be owned by the home builder, Gerard. I believe he bought this house and, or built this house in 1927. And he lived here as his primary residence in Woodland Hills. And of course, Woodland Hills was actually named Gerard back in the 1920s. I don't know when it actually became known as Woodland Hills, but that was his residence on this street called Buena Ventura. They were just uh, one block west of Topanga Canyon. It's a very beautiful shiplap constructed two acre home. It's nice to see homes like this that are, this is 95 years old now. And uh, it's very well maintained, a very beautiful property.